the Bible using digital media, and today we're continuing our series in the book of Mark. We're actually nearing the end of the book of Mark. We're in Mark 14, verses 1 through 9. In this passage, the plot to kill and betray Jesus is finally set in motion, and Mark uses a literary device that he uses all throughout his book to create a contrast between the people that are trying to kill him and betray him, and at least as far as this passage is concerned, the one person that seems to value him enough to do a great sacrifice for the Messiah. This contrast that Mark creates really ought to make us think about our own fate. The Pharisees and the scribes are now actively seeking a way to kill Jesus, but not during the Passover feast, because there's a time for everything. And while they plot, Jesus is having dinner with some friends until the dinner is interrupted by a woman who brings an expensive bottle of perfume, breaks it, and pours the contents of it on Jesus' head. The people who witness this are indignant because this woman could have sold the contents of the bottle and given it to the poor. Jesus stops his friends from scolding this woman and actually tells them that she's done a good thing and commends her for her actions. At the end of this passage, Judas seeks the scribes and the Pharisees to betray Jesus, fact that makes the religious leadership very happy. It is important to point out the many social norms that this woman had to break in order to accomplish what she did. For one, the meal that she interrupted was more than likely for men only. Women would have only participated in the serving of the food. Secondly, the perfume that she brought with her was indeed very expensive. It was worth a whole year's salary. Since women at the time didn't necessarily have the means to make a fortune, more than likely, this perfume was a family heirloom. To add to that, she breaks the flask it was contained in, meaning that for her, this was a full-fledged sacrifice. Given how expensive the perfume was, it is understandable, somewhat, how people reacted to her gesture. Jesus actually doesn't shoot down the idea that the perfume could have been used to benefit the poor, but he actually says that what she did was greater than just helping the poor. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for my burial. And truly I say to you, Wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Mark uses his sandwich method in which this woman's gesture is sandwiched between two passages that address the plot to kill and betray Jesus. This creates a very clear contrast between the religious leaders, Judas, and the woman. This passage shows us that neither knowledge nor proximity are a guarantee of devotion. After all, the Pharisees and the scribes were extremely knowledgeable of scripture, but they want to kill Jesus. And Judas was a companion of Jesus for the entire length of his ministry, and he wants to betray him. In contrast, the woman, whose name we don't even know, shows up and makes a great sacrifice for the Messiah. If anything, this passage really ought to make us contemplate our own walk with Jesus, because we can think that we know him, merely because we sit through a sermon on Sunday, or we can think that we're close to them because we attend church. But this passage teaches us that those things aren't merely enough. That our devotion to Jesus really is in our willingness to sacrifice for Him, even if that sacrifice comes at a great personal price.